Hey comic book fans, welcome back to the Comic Fix. Now in today's video, I'm going to be taking a look at the first part of Life Without Jeff Johns in the Green Lantern universe. Starting off with Robert Vendetti's Green Lantern. Now it must be a hard, hard thing to take over a series that's been defined by someone like Jeff Johns. I mean, Jeff Johns, he came onto the scene with Green Lantern and said, I am going to take this universe, I'm going to rework it and make it into something that just sells and sells and sells. And now that he has done that, Jeff John said, I'm gonna go on to Greener Pastures and go work on the Justice League book. Now, pretty soon I will be looking at the Justice League, seeing how he's doing on that series. So Robert Vendetti, you have a lot of things to live up to. Now, can he live up to this potential that we hopefully have for him? Well, I gotta say, I do think he does. Now we start off his story arc with this big old battle that is going on in Oa. Now this mysterious villain is attacking Oa when it's at its weakest. weakest. You see Hal Jordan just being thrown into this battle that he knows he cannot win. I mean, it is so bad that even the Power Rings don't have any more power. So they know that the only way that they have to survive is to go to the central power battery and recharge. And when they get there, they find that it does not work at all. Now, what is going on? Who is this mysterious person that is attacking Oa? Well, hopefully, pretty soon, Robert Vendetti will be telling us who this person is exactly. And so, we go into the now, where we see Hal Jordan just going and trying to get back with his off-again, on-again girlfriend, Carol Ferris. And when you see this, you're like, okay, Robert Vendetti, he's trying to go and take the thing that Jeff Johns kind of went away from was the human element to Hal Jordan. Because there was a time in Jeff Johns' run where Hal Jordan didn't even take off his ring at all. So it's nice for Robert Vendetti to be starting off his story arc in this way. And you see Carol Ferris, and she, as we all should know, is part of the Star Sapphire. And with the Star Sapphire, their, their power to their ring is how they have to feel true, genuine love. And she basically tells them, like, Hal, I love you, but I know you're going to mess this up. And if you mess this up and I don't love you anymore, then I know that I won't have the power of this ring. And I just like this. You're just, you're automatically getting the first right off the bat saying, having her say to her, no, you have messed up so many times. And I just like how we had this character development right off the bat. And then Hal gets the call saying, you need to go to Oa. And this is where you see Robert Vendetti changing some things up in this series. Where the new Guardians, they have been put in a box and now they are released and they are now able to see the universe for the very first time. They're almost like little kids. I just love how the way Hal is portrayed in this book. And you see them go up to Hal Jordan, tell him, we need you to be the leader of the Green Lantern Corps. And I just, you just see Robert Mendetti putting himself in this uh, position where he's like, I'm going to thrust Hal Jordan into the leadership role that Hal Jordan has always been put in, but it's almost been by force. And now to see Hal Jordan be like, you are the leader. You are, it's not just a situation, but you have to be the leader. And so Robert Vendetti, he has changed a couple of things up, and it just feels like the next genuine step that would have been in Hal Jordan's story is for him to become leader of the Green Lantern Corps. Because as we all should know, he's been the focal point of this series for so long. And to see how Hal Jordan responds to this, she's like, hell no do I want to become a part of this leadership role. Because no one trusts the Green Lantern in the universe anymore. Ever since what the, the Guardians did previously in Jeff Johns' run. And so the, Green, so the Guardians basically said, we're going to go travel the galaxy and try to figure out what makes the universe tick and how can we be better than our predecessors. And so I'm just like, wow, you're setting up a lot of things in this first issue, from the love interest to Hal Jordan becoming a part of the Green Lantern Corps leader. And you're like, oh, this is awesome. 
And then his first decision is to go and release all the rings to go find new recruits. Because the Green Lantern Corps has been shaken to his core, and now it's his chance to basically get some new recruits and mold them into what he wants. And this is where you get to see the change. You see that Kilowog is now the, the person behind the computer desk. He's the one making sure everything flows together. And it's really interesting seeing Kilowog in this position because you definitely tell that he's not meant to be in this position. He's always been the guy who's trained the new recruits and being the brute forcer. And now he has to be the guy behind the scenes. And during these scenes where you see Hal Jordan messing around with the computer and basically sending out all those rings, that's where you see the humor side of Robert Vendetti's writing happening. And then you see the artwork, which I can't remember the artist right off the top of my head, but you see his artwork in there and you're just like, damn, this is a good team. He's put, Robert Vendetti is putting some humor into this book that it kind of needed. I mean, there's a lot of times in DC Comics where they say to us, Green Lantern or any DC book, are not fun to read. Well, you can definitely see that Robert Vendetti's trying to change this up where there are some very dramatic moments and dark moments, but there's also that moment where you're just like, yeah, this is fun to read. And so you get that with Kilowog trying to chase after these rings because he knows he's like, we don't have the, the resources to go and train all these new recruits. I need to get the rings. And that's when you see the humor happening. And I just absolutely loved this part. And as the rings are getting sent out, Robert Vendetti puts Hal Jordan in his first ever conflict as the Green Lantern Corps leader. And that is when Larflees decides to attack, because he knows, Larflees knows. And I just love how you see um, the artwork of Larflees and you see the greed in his eyes. And Larflees knows, I gotta attack Oa while it's at its weakest. And that's where you see the panel layouts that get bigger and bolder and you're just like okay I am liking this book and as you're going through the series you just see a little more pieces being thrown at the at the reader and Robert Mendetti is not afraid of putting different storylines going each and every way I am wondering how this story is going to end up because you can definitely see that how uh, the Green Lanterns and each, every Lantern is not the same at this point because they're having some troubles with their power rings um, from the green to the red to everybody is having trouble. Now, why are they having trouble? Where there's a point in the first or first or second issue that is in Robert Benet's run of Green Lantern where you see the power ring, they try to charge it and it does not work. What is going on? And you just see the power rings acting funny. And you, they, you do know that there's something going amiss. And there is just so much potential in this series that I have hope that Robert Vendetti can just take the series and make it its own. There's humor. There's some drama. There's some everything that you would want in a book is in this series. Now, in the first three issues... Especially the third issue, issue number 23, you do see how how Jordan is dealing with being leader. After the whole entire battle with Larflees, you see the destruction that happened. And you see how Jordan, how Jordan has knows that he is not meant to be leader. And he would rather take the brute of the force before he sends out any of his men to, to go into battle. He would one be the one on the front line. And you see how Jordan try and go through this, and you see that Robert Vendetti's putting some points in there where he tries to make how Jordan realize that he cannot do this anymore. And I just absolutely love this. There's so much intrigue in this first three issues that I do think that Robert Vendetti was the perfect pick to relaunch, or not even relaunch, but to take the mantle from Jeff Johns. And this is going to be one fun-ass ride. Now, let's hope that Green Lantern Core issue 21 to 23 can be the same. But for now, Green Lantern Core or Green Lantern, issue 21 to 23, the new era of Robert Vendetti, is absolutely awesome. Go and check it out, and I will see you guys on the next Comic Fix.